Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson of the Magical Voxel Mastering Course. Today we are going to be talking about the outline. It is a very powerful tool that will help you a lot if you have very complex scenes or maybe if you just like to keep your things organized within your Magical Voxel files. So let's jump right into it. So we're going to start from our colored creeper. If you want the file for this creeper you can find it in the description of this video. As you remember, we talked a little bit about the layers, but I didn't want to dive very deep into it because with the outliner and understanding how to use it, it becomes much easier to understand. So right now you can notice that the borders of each one of these working areas have a bit of an orangey yellow tone. This is because all of them are inside this layer. If I would select everything and then click on this little arrow and in another one of these layers, everything would become the color of this layer, number two. That's because everything is inside here. So if I hide this layer, you will see that things hide or show. So I will just set, grab everything and put it back into layer zero. So one of the options that you have here on the edit panel, you will notice that you have the hide button. When you click it, everything becomes invisible. And if you click away, it seems pretty much like the object was deleted, but it wasn't. Actually, what happened is, what, is that it's hidden, but not hidden on the layer, it's hidden somewhere else, which is the outliner. So to see it, just open this arrow here. You will see that here says project, and we have a bunch of other options. We're gonna talk about the other options by the end of this video. But the one I want to talk to you about today is the outline. So the outline will have a list of objects here which are all of the objects of your scene. You see, if I click any of them, they will highlight here on the right. And notice that one of them is has this little sphere emptied. This, this is because I hit that object. So if I select it, you will see that it's there. And you can just show it by clicking this button here. Or you can just click on this little ball or sphere and it will just show or hide your objects. Furthermore, you can do other things with the outliner. You can select one of the objects, for instance, let's select the head, and we can right click here and just change the name here and call it head. You can have within a layer a lot of things and still be organized and not be confused. So I will go ahead and name all of the parts. Good, so now everything is properly named. Let's see what else we can do with the outline. So you notice that you have a bunch of options here. So one by one, the first one will just basically create a new working area where you can just go in and create your voxels. Uh, you can also do that by pressing Ctrl N, it's the same, but well, you have a button there. Additionally, you can delete anything on the scene by selecting it and clicking the minus button here. Then you have the option to group objects. So basically you can select everything and create a group. And this group will contain all of these parts. So you see how it's much easier to work with groups in this way, because it's much more visual. So I can call this group creeper. And then I know that I can go in and edit any of the parts. If I just double click, you yeah, can work on this part, double click, work on this part, and then just go back to my to my root scene with double click and then the group is closed again otherwise you can just open and close your group using uh, these two arrows so you can select your group go in then select your part go in work on it go out go out again and then your group is closed and um, additionally if you are within a group or or with the outliner in general, you can just select parts and with these arrows, just move them up and down the, the hierarchy. So you can have, I don't know, for instance, the head, then the body, and then all the legs or just the, the two front legs go up and the two back legs go down. That makes it a bit easier to organize your scene. Then you have these other squares here. You see that they have a color. This color represents the layer they are, they are within. So for instance, I could have all of the legs in this layer instead. And you see that now the red, this became like a red color and this continued to be a yellow color because even if the group is closed 
I can just hide part of the groups using the layers, right? And this one will hide everything because the group itself is within the first layer and that's why it hides everything when I hide this one. Uh, if you click on your objects on the outline, you will have a bunch of options here that, that are pretty self-explanatory. You can hide, you can hide other things other than this one. You can show all of the parts and some other options will only work if you have uh, a collapsible folder like the creeper group, for instance, if I just go close, it will just close it. The same that clicking this arrow here. Uh, if you had a bunch of things open, you can just close inactive and it will close everything. And then this root is basically your scene, so you cannot change that one. So this is the outliner. That's a very powerful tool. You can see how you can make very complex scenes much more understandable using this tool. And now I want to show you the other options that you have in this panel here. So this project option basically allows you to open other files that you have within the Magica Voxel main folder that you have on your computer, you will find all of these things. So if you wanted some project that you are always opening, let's say that you're making an NFT collection and you have a base character, you can save it within the Magica Voxel folder and then be able to just click that base file and open it all the time. Let me just show you how to do that. So within the Magica Voxel folder, if you go to Vox, you will find that here you have all of those files that we were seeing. So if you save, if you copy and paste your file here, let's do an example of that. I'll paste my base character that I use for my Synth Hunters game. And now you don't even need to reopen the software. It's just, it will show up there. You can just click it and open it. And there you have it. So let's go back to the other file to continue the lesson. Good. So the next, the other options that you have are the shaders and I will work on this, uh, work on a special video for this, only for this one, because it's a bit more complex. We talked about the pattern panel already in our, in the previous videos. And the last one that I want to show you is the file panel. In here, you will be able to save and export uh, a lot of options. And this is how you export your files to different softwares. And you have the option to export your palette or not. Maybe you don't need it. This will basically create a PNG file. Maybe you just want to export that so you can unclick everything else. Then your camera, your render, all of this information will be saved in your file when you save. Otherwise, if you don't want that information, just remove it and all of those things will be lost. The file will be lighter, but Magica Voxels files are so light that I suggest you always keep everything here. Okay, I'm on a fresh scene now to show you the import options. So when you open the import folder, you will see, you can navigate your computer and import any other Magica Voxel file. So if I click, for instance, whatever of them, I will just delete the default cube now. And you can see that because I have selected the option match color, Magica Voxel will basically look into your palette and find the closest color that the original file had applied to each part and apply it. So depending on what are the colors of the palette, Magica Voxel will reassign one to match it as close as possible with the original. Otherwise, if you import with selecting selected color, it will mean that when you import, no matter what colors you have on your palette, it will always use the ones that were originally used on the original file. So basically this file had a color saved in this material here. So it will apply that one because it's just on the position index 59 that you can see on the bottom left. So those are the two difference. When you choose both of them at the same time, I don't know why you can do that, but it will basically do set the, the match color option regardless. And if you don't select any of them, it will do the selected color option. So back to our creeper scene, uh, we have some options for exporting and you can see that you have the option to click where it says selection only. The difference will be that if you want to export these 
or other 3D software, let's say Maya or Blender, you will most likely use the OBJ option. Sometimes you can also use the PLY for Blender in particular, but it won't work for Maya as far as I know. But basically these are formats that other software can open instead of the VOX file that it's native from Magica Voxel. So basically if you want to export your object, all you need to do is open this little arrow here and select one of those two options or depending on what you want to do for different software one of these options this is the extension of the file basically and that will basically export the file each piece that you have will be named whatever you write here so let's uh, creeper named let's do that and let's press save so basically we'll export each one or of these working areas with that name so if now i open that folder you will see that you will get, I will just go details. You will, you will get an OBJ file for each piece. Then you will get an ML, MTL file, which basically explains to other software how to apply these textures that it will create. So basically each one of these is the palette that you have. It will create one palette for each one of your objects, but they are basically all of the same. So you could very well only save one and apply that one, but it's, they are so small that there's no point on being deleting everything. So basically, if you open these files, you will see that is a line of 255 pixels because the last the last one in Magica Voxel is blocked out. So it will go one by one. I will just make it bigger here so you can see it you will go one by one, copying these colors and placing a, a pixel for each one of the colors. And then you see that now it reaches the black pixel. So it's a few of those, then a few gray that we have here. And then all of the green ones are here. So that's how Magica Voxel will apply the colors to the object. You will just create pixels and use those pixels to paint the different faces that it creates because it will create a polygon for each different color that you have. So this creeper will be pretty high polygon probably so that this is your export and I will just delete this to show you the other option which is selected only um, and when you click any of the objects let's say you exported everything but then you made a small change on the head and you want to re-export only that in instead of exporting everything you select that you click OBJ and just export again which whatever name you can just call it head uh, creeper and this will create a new file with only that head with its MTL file and its PNG texture map. Cool. So this is all for this lesson. This will help you a lot to organize and export your files and see you on the next lesson.